A civil war is a war fought between people of the same nation. Usually, in a civil war, two or more groups of citizens in a country believe in things so strongly they fight each other in order to get their way. The war that began with the Battle of Fort Sumter would later come to be known as the U.S. Civil War, or the war between the states, and it was an awful, bloody time in American history. There have been and continue to be civil wars in other countries. After the Battle of Fort Sumter, both sides, the Union and the Confederacy, built up their armies as quickly as possible. Throughout the North, people wanted President Lincoln to do whatever he could to end the war quickly, and most people assumed that the war would end quickly. After all, the Union had more people, more factories, a larger army, and a powerful navy. The first true test between the armies of the North and the South came in July 1861 in the state of Virginia. Virginia is home to the city of Richmond, the capital of the Confederacy at the time of the Civil War. Today, Richmond is the capital of Virginia. Virginia also touches Washington D.C., the capital of the United States. Three months after the Battle of Fort Sumter. Thousands of Union and Confederate soldiers met in Virginia for the first major battle of the Civil War. As President, Abraham Lincoln was Commander in Chief of the U.S. Army, also called the Union Army. The President of the United States is always the Commander in Chief or top commander of the Army and other armed forces. He decided to try to end the war quickly by sending his army to destroy the Confederate army in Virginia and capture the city of Richmond. So it was decided that a large Union army would invade Virginia. The Union army moved toward the town of Manassas, where there was a small river called Bull Run. The plan was for the Union army to crush whatever army the Confederacy tried to put in its path. And then march on and attack Richmond. Remember, Richmond was the capital of the Confederacy. The Union army had thirty-five thousand soldiers, which up to that day was the single largest army ever assembled in America. The Union did not realize, however, that the Confederate army, or the rebels as they were also called, had roughly the same number of soldiers in the area. A large Confederate force had marched within twenty-five miles of Washington D.C. They set up camp at the town of Manassas and waited to see what the Union army would do. That July, the Virginia summer heat was so hot it was sometimes hard to breathe. Union soldiers, many wearing heavy wool clothing, marched slowly for two days over rolling farmland and across shallow, muddy creeks. The Confederate soldiers waited for them at Manassas. Later, soldiers in the Union Army wore blue uniforms, and soldiers in the Confederate Army wore gray uniforms. These two colors became symbols for the Union and the Confederacy. By July twenty-first, it was clear that the armies were going to clash or have a big conflict or disagreement. The only question was who was going to fire the first shot. Many wealthy citizens from Washington D.C., including members of Congress, traveled with the Union Army on its march from the capital. Like so many others, these civilians or non-soldiers expected a quick battle, a rousing victory for the Union, and a quick end to the Confederate cause. These civilians wanted to witness the Union's victory and the Confederacy's defeat with their own eyes. Now imagine what it might have been like for those civilians who traveled from Washington D.C. to Manassas to watch the battle. They had driven their carriages and packed nice picnic lunches. They brought telescopes so they could see the action. Some had even brought their wives and children to watch history in the making. Imagine a family watching the battle unfold from atop a grassy hill. Civilians would watch from behind a line of Union artillery or cannons. As the Confederates marched across the field, the Union guns opened fire. 
Smoke filled the air so that civilian observers could no longer see what was happening. They could not see the disaster that was unfolding right in front of them, but something they heard gave them an idea that this battle was not going to go as Lincoln and his generals had hoped. The Confederate Army did not run away as the Union had hoped. Instead, amid the firing of cannons and rifles, a new, terrifying sound emerged. This sound would come to be known as the Rebel Yell, and it would haunt Union soldiers for years to come. It was a high-pitched scream, a battle cry which the Confederates yelled out as they attacked the Union army. Despite careful planning, almost nothing went according to the plans the Union army had made. The Confederate cannons were older and less powerful than the Union's cannons, but the Confederate soldiers firing them seemed to have more skill or ability. Several of the Confederate commanders seemed to have more skill than the Union commanders as well. One commander, named General Thomas Jackson, showed particular courage and intelligence. That day, General Jackson earned the nickname Stonewall Jackson because he stood like a stone wall against the Union attack. Stonewall Jackson went on to earn a reputation as one of the most brilliant generals in the Confederate Army, although he was killed halfway through the war. Stonewall Jackson and the rest of the Confederate Army won the First Battle of Manassas. By late afternoon, the Union Army broke apart and retreated or went back toward the safety of Washington, D.C., The civilians who had come to watch the battle were shocked to realize that they were in the path of the retreating Union Army. Retreating means running away. The road back to Washington, D.C. quickly became clogged as the soldiers, running and on horseback, ran into panicked civilians trying to flee in their carriages. Flee means to run quickly from danger. Thousands of Union and Confederate soldiers were wounded or captured in this battle. Hundreds of men on both sides died as a result of those wounds because doctors didn't have the equipment or training then that they have today. The landscape around the battlefield was also devastated or destroyed, with roads, bridges, and entire hillsides in ruins. This image shows the destruction caused by the battle to both people and the land. A few days before, this was all lush green farmland. This was just the first of many, many battles in the years the Civil War took place. And the battles would be much bloodier in the months and years to come. After that first battle, which was called the First Battle of Manassas, or the First Battle of Bull Run, President Lincoln and others in the North realized that this civil war would not be easy to win. The Union realized that they would need a much larger army, and more importantly, they would need to prepare for a much longer war. In fact, within a year, many people would be wondering whether the Union would be able to win the war at all.